Oké, okay. groot 10, in die vorige video het ek gepraat oor chemische bindings en wat het is. In this video, we will be looking at the three different types of chemical bonds. This will probably split, be split into two videos, one on covalent bonds and one on ionic and metallic bonds. Oké, okay, so, ons het daai drie verskillende verbindings wat tussen elemente voorkom wanneer ons verbindings vorm. We have covalent bonds, we have ionic bonds and we have metallic bonds. Goed, so ek gaan begin met covalente bindings in jylle handboek is op bladse 38. The important things I highlighted in this. So jy moet weet, covalente bindings is wanneer elektrone gedeel word. Ek gaan nou vir jylle met een voorbeeld wees. It always occurs between different non-metals. So bijvoorbeeld as ons kyk na ons diatomiese elemente, ons diatomiese elemente sal bijvoorbeeld wees kloor, met die twee, in other words, it's chlorine bonded to chlorine, and both of those are non-metals, so that would be a covalent bond. A ander voorbeeld sal wees, byvoorbeeld, koolstofdioxid. If you look at that, carbon and oxygen are all non-metals, in other words, those will also have covalent bonds between the carbon and the oxygen. Um, dan, baie belangrik, die kleinste deelkie van covalente verbindings is molecules. You're going to see for each of the different types of bonds, I'm going to distinguish between what the smallest particle is. So, uh, al drie daar goeders tot so ver gepraat het, is baie belangrik, want jylle moet die verskil ken tussen wat gebeur met die elektrone by covalent, wat gebeur met die elektrone by metaalbindings, wat gebeur met die elektrone by ionische bindings, um, between which types of particles it takes place, and what the smallest particle it is. Okay, goed, dan baie belangrik, Wanneer ons kyk na covalente bindings, kan hy verder opgedeel word in nipolare covalente bindings en polare covalente bindings. So, I'm going to show you an example of each. And we are going to go into a in-depth investigation of this in grade 11. But I just need you to understand the basics for now. So when we're talking about polar and non-polar, when a covalent bond is non-polar, it means that the electrons are shared equally between the two atoms that forms the bond. So on daar ons het gesê, covalente bindings is wanneer die elektrone gedeel word en wanneer die elektrone evenveel tyd spandeer by al twee van die atome, dan beteken dit vir hom een nipolare binding. A polar bond, on the other hand, means that yes, the electrons are shared, but they tend to sp spend a bit more time on the one elect on the one atom than on the other one. En om te praat oor po polar of nie polar, moet ons gauw kyk op ons periodieke tabel. Gaan so my net vir die blokkie oorteken van al. So, we've been spending time on the atomic number and on the mass number, but here on the side, on the left hand side, there is another number there. So jylle kan gaan kyk achter in jylle handboek op jylle periodieke tabel. Jylle sal sien, ons het altyd spandeer aan die atoomgetal en aan die massagetal, maar hierdie ene is die een wat ons kyk vir elektronegativiteit. So we discussed this a bit in the second term when we did the trends on the periodic table. Ondou elektronegativiteit beteken hoe graag a atoom die elektrone by hom wil hee. So the higher that number, the stronger the affinity will be for electrons. Jy kan gaan kyk op jou periodieke tabel, die een wat die hoogste elektronegativiteit het, is fluor, hier rechts boe in die hoekie wil ek amper sê, um, that one has the electronegativity of 4, meaning that he has the strongest affinity for electrons. Ok, so as ons gaan kyk na die polare bindings, gaan ons gaan kyk na bijvoorbeeld wanneer H2 vorm. Ok, and this counts, this example counts for all of the diatomic elements. So we say, we know the valence electrons of a hydrogen is just one, so I draw them like that. Ek teken hulle maar net laat hulle na mekaar te wees, so dat julle kan sien daai orbitale gaan na mekaar overlap. So remember, this side has an orbital, and this side has an orbital, but neither of the orbitals are filled. They only have one electron in each. Nou gaan kyk ons die elektronegativiteit van 
waterstof is 2,1 and then we calculate the difference in electronegativity. So you take the highest one minus the lowest one. So the highest one is 2,1, the lowest one is 2,1, which gives us the electronegativity of zero. So wanneer hierdie elektronegativiteit laag is, in fact lower as 0,9, then it means that the electrons are shared equally between the two. We need not to feel worried with Dwayne. Dwayne can us out in grade 11. So then when this bond forms, it means that the electrons spend an equal amount of time on this hydrogen and on this hydrogen. So you can't say, okay, they like this one a bit more than this one. They will spend even more time on all three. With other words, then say us, this is a nipulare covalente binding. A non-polar covalent bond. So on down now, all is going to happen under the umbrella of covalent bindings. How do we know it's covalent? Because it's hydrogen and hydrogen. Both of those are non-metals. So then the next thing we know is it must be sharing of electrons. So now when we talk about polar and non-polar, we are just distinguishing how are they sharing it. Die hulle het het gelijk of spandeer het meer tyd by die ene as by die ander ene. Ok, so the other one that I want to look at is when we form NH3. Ok, en ek gaan hierdie haal so rondom omteken, wat julle kan sien, waar hulle gaan gaan sit en ek teken hulle sommer met sterrekies. And I want you guys to just notice the valence electrons for nitrogen is 5, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the valence electron for water is the yield at 1. So that's why I get those crosses. Okay, so now we go to our periodic table. We read off the electronegativity of H is 2,1. The electronegativity of nitrogen is 3. So then to calculate the difference in electronegativity, say the worst inner, 3, minus the lowest one, 2,1, which gives you 0, 0,9. So 0, 0,9 is sort of like our cut-off point. And say for now, okay, here is dead mark stock. This means that the nitrogen has a significantly higher affiliation for the electrons than the hydrogen. What does that mean? As they now gaan overlap, and I can try to make them with the same that you see, they deal it still steeds, but the electron is sit Dit sit hier erg nader aan die stikstof nie, maar ek wil net hee, jylle moet verstaan, hylle spandeer a bykie meer tyd by die stikstof. Meaning that, we say, it is a polar covalent bond. En jylle gaan nou nou maar sien, wanneer ons kyk na die oonise bindings, wanneer die verskil in elektronegativiteit groter is as 2,1, dan beteken het die een atoom het een baie sterker aantrekking vir die elektrone, so sterk dat hy in fact die elektron gaan steel by die een en nou om te vat. So when this one becomes significantly high, and our cut-off point for that is 2,1, then it means that it's not going to be sharing of electrons anymore. The one has such a big affiliation that it will actually take the electron from the other atom into its own orbitals. Mons come later by that out. Okay, great teams. I don't want you to be alarmed by the 0, 0,9, but I need you to understand that if we're looking at diatomic, so let's say F2, it's always going to be an electronegativity of 0. Why? Because it's 4 minus 4. Want Die twee atome daar binnen gaan ons precies die selling elektronegativiteit hee. So when you're looking at diatomic, it's always going to be non-polar covalent. En dan kan jylle net vir die ander gaan uitwerk, as hy hier by 0,9 kom, dan beteken dit, dit raak nou bykies te veel, so dan gaan dit meer tyd spandeer by die ene as by die ander ene. Ok, then the last thing we need to talk about on covalent bonds, but we're going to spend a lot of time on this in grade 2. 11 as well, you just need to know that they can form a single, a double, or a triple bond. So, I get here for you so long, the 
Lewe strukture gaan inteken van fluor en sierstof en stikstof. So I know that fluorine has 7 valence electrons in its outermost energy level. Met ander woorde, hier is ons een elektron en daar is ons een elektron wat in half gevulde orbitale is. So what's going to happen between those two is they are going to share an orbital. En dan gaan ons sê F, gaan nou bly by die kolikies en die kruisies, laat julle net sien. Like that, and because it only shares one pair of electrons, this is a single bond. However, when it comes to oxygen, you need to see that this electron and this electron are in half filled orbitals, and this electron and this electron is also in half filled orbital. So, what gaan gebeur is die twee gaan een orbital deel en die twee gaan ook een orbital deel, to fill up the orbitals. So then we're going to have oxygen, like this, en net kyk, ek denk, hulle is vir hulle geteken, ja, hulle is geteken vir hulle ook, like this, en die ander twee gaan sit ek net hier aan die kant, so, in other words, now it has, one, two pairs of electrons that it's sharing, so this is a double bond. Goed, en dan gaan die selfde gebeur hier by die stikstof, hy gaan hier deel, hy gaan hier deel, en hy gaan hier die elektrone van hom omdruk, dat hulle ook kan deel. Remember, if they share the electrons, they go to a more stable energy state. So, hy gee nie om om die elektrone een bykie om te druk nie, solang hy dan meer stabiel is. In other words, we have one, two, three orbitals where it's shared. So, hierdie is a triple binding. 